Hi, welcome to Artistry Collaborative. My name is Joanne and I'm so glad you're here today. If you're new to my channel, well, welcome. I hope you stick around and if you like what you see, become a subscriber because I would love for you to join my YouTube family. And to my subscribers, well, you know I just adore you and so grateful for you and and your comments. I just, I love you all, really, truly. Um, we are growing and please like and share these videos um, because they really improve my um, rating in the YouTube world and so it's, it's very exciting. So today we have three fall DIYs, florals and, um, well yeah, they're pretty much florals, uh, but I had a lot of fun. I love fall and so, um, yeah, I hope you do too. So, at Artistry Collaborative, we are the home of TriLab because, well, all we want you to do is try. That's all it takes, and I will help you every step of the way. If you have a problem or you want, uh, want to change it up a little bit and you don't really know how, leave a comment below. I will get back to you. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. So, yeah, let's get going. Let's start creating fall DIYs. So this is the second time I'm doing this tutorial. I lost the footage the first time, um, but that's okay because these are really cool. And I'm going to do it a notch up from the last time that I did it. These are just pieces of 2x4s. Um, I guess this is 2x3. This is 1x4, 2x3. All different sizes. Compliments of my wonderful brother-in-law. So, instead of just painting them, I'm going to show you stenciling on one. I'm going to um, do some uh, using modeling paste. We're going to uh, give it a raised effect. I can't think of the name of it right now. And then we'll decoupage one. And we're going to make a little pumpkin patch. So, I think it'll be really, really cute. This looks like it's on an angle, so that's got to be the top. So this one I just mixed up a bunch of greens and I added some flesh color and I ended up with that. I have a lot of like little bits and pieces so I'm just trying to use that up um, before I move again. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So right now I'm going to use, um, try cashew, I've never tried cashew before. Uh, and I see one YouTuber use it all the time. So, we'll give it a shot. So this is Cashew by Waverly um, Chalk Paint. And you get this at uh, Walmart. What I heard is that Walmart is not going to carry this anymore. Um, which is too bad. But I haven't had a problem getting colors that I want. Um, not all the Walmarts carry them or carry all the sizes because there's this little size that's a dollar sixty seven which is great if you just want to try a color see if you really like it um, and then the bigger size is six fifty seven uh, and then there's an even bigger one that's ten something so um, check your Walmart crafts department and uh, you will uh, see the colors there I guess depending on what part of the country you're in. I don't know. But anyway. Alright, so I'm going to go and paint this one cashew. And I think I'll probably paint this one in orange. And, um, and then I'll come back when this is all dried. This is what it looks like. And this is one of my favorite stencils. So I'm going to tape it down. I don't normally do that, but just of course this is just painter's tape so it doesn't leave any kind of residue now I've never done this before either but I am going to try to color 
my paste. This should be interesting. So I'm taking some of my paste. It's modeling paste um, by Liquitex. And he's calling it just gold. And squeeze that in. mix it in. Now again, I've never done this before, so I have modeling paste that are already metallic, but I've packed them up, so <laughs> I don't know where they are right now. Yeah. Oh, it's losing its sheen again. Hmm. Well, we're going to use it anyway, because I want to see what happens once it dries. So then you just take this, and you use your palette knife, and you spread it an even coat all the way down. Now, unfortunately, this does not fit the entire board. So I'm going to have to wait till this dries, and then sort of match it up, but I don't know if I'll be able to, and do the rest of this side. And then, once that is dry, I will turn it over and do the back side. I don't know if I'm going to do the sides. Probably not. Because that just sounds like it would be a nightmare. So... You don't want that to happen. You don't want the stencil to come up because then your paste goes under that stencil and it ruins the image. Like everything I'm doing right now, don't do that. And it's best to just use a little bit at a time and go slow. Slow is not a speed I'm comfortable with. But, then I just kind of scrape it off, Again, it won't be perfect because that came up. I'll take the tape off. And there's that. Now, I really don't like this big clump. So I'm going to take that off. this one either, but I think I can move with it. Now if you really don't like it, you could scrape the whole thing off and start again. But I'm going to wait till this dries, and then I will do this little thing again in a piece here. So I stenciled this side and it actually looks crackled, which I really, really like. So I'm going to stencil this side. So I have a sponsor from Dollar Tree and Waverly Chalk Paint and Ivory. And let me get my stencil. And this is bigger than the um, image, so that's cool. And I'm just going to lightly hold it down. And <clears throat> I put some paint on here and then you just spounce and you don't want to wipe you just go up and down and up and down until you completely cover the image
the reason why you do this is because you don't want too much paint on your sponge because it will leak underneath and then um, you'll lose the image. So it's really important to not overpaint when you're stenciling. And there. Alright, so now I'm going to wait for that to dry. I'm going to go clean off my stencil and I'll be back. This I um, was just a piece of board. It's like 9 by 11 scrap piece and I did it in the um, antique wax and so and then this one I ended up sanding it and I was going to repaint it and I just really like it so I'm just keeping that as is so I placed my pieces on my board and then I took a marker and I went where the middle of that would be and I marked all three of these and now I'm going to take my drill as you can see I put marks I'm going to drill a hole all the way through and then I'm going to place this on here well we're going to decoupage that one so I'm not done with that one but um, place it on here and then we will nail it to the board to the hole so let me do that so as you may have seen in many of my other tutorials um, but if you're new, maybe you haven't, and it's all new to you, which is great. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do, but it's napkin decoupage. And so we are going to decoupage the um, little pumpkin. So I have this napkin. It might be a Dollar Tree napkin. I'm not positive. Um, but what you need to do is separate the plies. So usually you can do it with your fingers, but if you can't, you just take a piece of tape and you pull and it comes right off. Now I save these because I can dye them and use them in other art projects. Now, I would like this image right here maybe that. So the best way to do this is to take a small um, paintbrush and use water and just go around the image that you would like to now give it space because it does spread so you may lose some of your image so I like to do it bigger than I actually need it this way here when I pull it apart I get the part of the image that I would like so you just pull and there you go now you just get some Mod Podge. I'm using the um, matte finish because we'd like this to look rustic. So I'm just going to put a little on here. I'm going to spread it around. then I'm going to place my image like so and then you want to gently 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 now if you don't want this on the bottom you can trim it um, it wouldn't bother me to be on the bottom I do want it to overlap on the sides so I need to put some Mod Podge on the sides in order to completely get it to stay down. 
and again you want to go gently 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 because you know it's very very thin and um, it will tear and that's that now if you want to do the whole pumpkin you can um, Actually, I think I might. Okay, so I had to do some patchwork. So if you want to cover the whole block, I recommend that you put the whole napkin over it so that it's continuous. Um, but it, it doesn't, you know, you can't really tell. So anyways, I dug out the tops for my stems with these tools with my drill. And now I've made a hole in the bottom and I'm going to line this up and get my drill now this is going to go through that hole and I'm just going to put this on there I'm trying to do it so that you guys can see now you could glue this on too you don't have to nail it in I just really want it to stay. So that's what they look like all together. And now we are going to put the stems in. This one I'm just going to glue on top, but I did make the holes big enough for these stems to fit in there. Okay, so now we're just going to get some hot glue. Put that on there. Push that in there. Push that. Now, I'm going to make a sign in the front that says, Welcome to our patch. So, again, another scrap of pe a piece of scrap wood. They are selling little pieces like this. It's a little bit thicker than this at Dollar Tree. So, if you don't have access to spare wood, um, you know, you can use that. But, um, so my piece is 11 inches long. So, I made this 11 inches like that. And um, it's going to say, Welcome to our patch. I actually had to patch together the words here. I'm not sure if you can see them. But I'm going to paint this in the celery green from Waverly and then I'm going to glue these. They're sticky but I'm going to glue them in place. I'm just going to write to our patch. Uh, patch will be, welcome and patch will be with the letters. And, um, and then I'm going to paint these orange. I'll probably paint them orange before. I put them on there. So using a little bit of the um, archival ink in vintage photo, I'm going to do a little distressing and that just means it's going to look a little aged. I'm just going around It just gives it a little more dimension, not so flat. Alright, so now I've got all my letters ready, I'm going to glue them on. So I'm probably just going to put some glue on my table. And then take my tweezers and a small paintbrush and paint the glue on so that I know I have full coverage and I'm just using tacky glue you can use E6000 you could use um, Gorilla Glue whatever you have in your stash is fine then I am just going to place it And then I'll move on to the next letter. And again, 
just covering the back side. So this is what it looks like so far, and I have excess here. So I'm going to use these um, little leaves. I was looking for something else, but again, with the move, <laughs> everything's a little crazy. So um, I'm just going to glue down from this, this set right here. I'm going to glue down a couple of these. Um, stickers just to fill in the area a little bit. So I'm just going to take a little glue put it on the back of the sticker. Even though the sticker is sticky I want to make sure it stays where I put it. Now this is a metallic marker and it's a bronze color and I'm just going to fill in these letters. They're kind of like a cardboard and I got them at um, Hobby Lobby on clearance. And then these were white and um, I got those at Michael's clearance. But again, you can use Dollar Tree ones. And now I'm just going to put dots all over just to make it a little more fun. We're going to do a little decorating. We've got some leaves, we've got some berry vine, and we've got some floral picks. So the first thing I want to do is put some leaves on the the uh, pumpkin. So I'm just using hot glue and thing with these Dollar Tree um, leaves is like be sure that you really peel them apart because they're like several several on a um, piece so make sure you get your, your money for it. And if you want to tack that down you could. I don't want to but I'm going to cut the sunflower and that's going to go right there. need to put some leaves in the back too. Can't have everything in the front. So. I'm just going to tie a little piece 
around the stem and then just twist it so it has those curly cues that pumpkins get. You could wrap this around a pencil if you wanted it more even, but I like it. I hope you like it too. All right, get ready for another DIY. So we take two of these. It says I love fall most of all, and I do. And we're going to to remove these little things only because you never know what you could use them for. Right. All right, so we are going to put these two together like that so you can get it on both sides. Make sure <laughs> you glue them right sides together, I mean right sides up. We are going to put a bead of glue as I can. Alright, then we're going to put them together and let those bond. Alright, so there's that. Now I have four of these and these are going to, or maybe I have three, no I have four. We are going to glue these together. they are going to sit up here like so. Now I was just going to put them together and just paint them but I'm thinking I would like this to be like a wooden fence. So I am going to grab some um, the large popsicle sticks. I took 18 of these sticks and um, cut them in half. Uh, and I hope that that should be enough to go all the way around. I was going to have them go longer on the sides, but the boxes go over the edge just a little bit. So I'm just going to have them go like that. So after I cut them, I'm going to sand them down. I'm just going to take the sanding sponge and just run it across just to smooth it out, keep it even, like that. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to glue these together and then I will glue it to this. But I'm going to use tacky glue because I want it to be, I, I just don't like hot glue um, for permanent things. So, I'm just going to take some of this glue. I'm going to spread it all around.
Then I'm going to put the two together. Use some of my clips. Way to hold that together. I think I'll get some elastics. So I'm going to put an elastic around the bottom. I'm going to go to a couple just so that they stay in place. Yeah. So I'm going to do two and two, and then once these are dry, I will put the four of them together. I mixed a couple of different greens that I had a darker green and a lighter green so that. I came up with this green. It's not exactly what I want, but I think it'll be okay. And now I'm going to take all my sticks and glue them on. I'm using tacky glue, and we'll just put some glue down. I like to use my finger because I feel like I get the best coverage. And just put them down. Like so. And then once I have them all down, I'm going to put a weight on here so that they stay down. And then once that dries, I'll turn to the other side and then the short sides. So I'm just going to keep going. More, so these are going to come down a little bit. Which is fine because we're going to put them here too. So that'll let that line up better. All right, so I'm going to do these, and I'll be back. So this is it complete. As you can see, there's light areas and dark areas, but that's okay. Um, I could give it another coat, but I'm going to distress it anyway. So I'm going to use my folk art um, antique wax and just do a light brushing all over the fence. And as you know, light brushing is very little paint on the brush, and you just all right. So I'm going to continue with this, and I'll be back. So I went through my florals, and I'm trying to pick out colors that match this. There's some green blue in there and a light yellow and almost a pinky peach. So we're going to take the box and we're going to hot glue it. So now you could use tacky glue if you want, but I feel like this is going to be pretty sturdy. So I'm just putting the hot glue in here. Make sure you get the corners really well, and then just going to place it evenly on there. All right. Now I've got some blocks from Dollar Tree, and we're going to hot glue. the foam inside. So, let's see. Ah, perfect. Ah, I like that. Alright. And then we're just going to put some hot glue on the bottom. And then pop it in. Now, if you want, you could put some of that um, Spanish moss 
just so the green doesn't show. You don't need a lot because the florals are pretty much going to cover the green. But I'm going to put a little bit just to fill it up a little bit. All right. Now, when you are um, working with florals, you always do your greens first. Um, the term is actually greening, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, except a lot of our greens are colors because we're doing a fall um, piece. But. You always want to do your base. So I'm going to get some of these. Um, almost all of these have from the Dollar Tree. Um, seems like a lot of DIYers on YouTube get their greens from uh, Walmart, but every time I go, they don't seem to really have that much. So I guess it may just be the Walmarts in my area, but there is not a whole heck of a lot. And you know, you want to alternate the colors so that it's not all the same colors in the same area. Although these all kind of look the same, but there are subtle differences. Like this should be at that side, but it's okay. And I wasn't going to hot glue these in because, you know, you can always change them out. But this is a fall piece, so I'm probably going to just keep it the way it is. I mean, I can't put Christmas in here and it says I love fall. Duh! Doesn't make much sense. So, yeah, I'm hot gluing them in so it stays. So that when you store it, it's uh, not so bad. So then I like to give it some height. So I have these, what are they calling these? Foxtails. And this will help to give it height. Some of these people went crazy for these flocking balls, and I just think they're very, very cool. And if you're not comfortable with um, flower arranging, don't hot glue them. You know, play around with it and see what you like. And then once everything is where you want it, then hot glue it. I just, you know, am pretty confident that I'll like where I put it, so yeah. But, yeah, I would recommend sticking them in and um, holding off before you actually glue them down. These balls were a really cool, or are a very cool thing. I don't know if that's a trend this year. I'm not sure. But 
I do like them. And again, I always go with my uh, rule of five uh, or three. It just looks more appealing. So I'm missing one of the balls from here. It's probably in my stash, so I have to come up with that. But that's only four. So that's not gonna work. And then I have the hydrangea. And I tend to like my flowers very compact. I don't like big, huge, over-the-top pieces. I like it tight. So, but if you do like it, like, very airy, just don't stick them so far down, you know. Just, uh, you know, put some on the bottom but build up and you could do a triangle shape there's different shapes that you can do uh, to create whatever is come you know some people like the ball shape some people like the triangle shape I mean there's all different ways to go but you do you know do a little research if you're not completely comfortable with arranging flowers it really isn't a big deal. You know, it's, you play. I, I, I cannot emphasize to you enough that this is all play. It really, really is. And then my sister-in-law gave me these. I'm going to try to get these in. It's really just a single stem, but let's see what I can do to break it up. Alright, so what I needed to do is add a large head flower. So I have some of these sunflowers my sister gave to me. They were, she cut them way too short. So I had to create an extension and all I did was add a piece of stem and then used floral tape. You can get this at the Dollar Tree uh, to, um, you know, make them taller because you do need some flowers with some height and you know some presents so that's what we're doing here we are adding the big ones and again it depends on you know what like how it's going to face but um, for me it is you know you can face it on either side but if you wanted to just do it so that it's on just one side, then you could do easily do that with, um, you know, just build this up on one side. Now, see, I need something here. I don't like this one. This one needs to go here. So I need to add a, I need to add a thing to this. So let me do that. Um, before I do that, though, I'm adding some of these. Um, they're the pink, and I just want them to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm putting this in here, and then there's some of this over here. And 
I found some more of these, and it definitely needs more of these. So, my mother loved these. Absolutely loved them. Yeah. So, yeah, so now I'm just going to make this, and then we'll put that, and I think that's probably it. Now, you could throw some pumpkins in here if you wanted, um, you know, some of the plastic gourds. Uh, let me just turn it around for that. Yeah, see, this one should be more. Let me fix this one. I did decide to put in a few pumpkins because, well, why not? So I'm just going to put in three. Or five. <laughs> oh gosh, I can never make up my mind. for the next DIY. Okay, so I, um, this is like curtain, extra curtain rod hangers, um, that I secured this with. I dug, like with my drill, I made some grooves in here to put the wheel in and then put this brace and then these. But, in retrospect, I think I could have just put a couple of blocks of wood, like so, to secure it. Um, so right now, I'm going to just reinforce it a little bit more. I'm going to put a few Jenga blocks. There is a gap here, so I think I may put some Jenga blocks in here. these lights from the Dollar Tree and they're um, maple leaves. So I'm going to they're gonna be behind the piece and I'm just going to start them like a little less than halfway up. You gotta catch the spoke so that it has something to hold on to.
light is it for you? Let's see. Okay. All right. So I have a bunch of my leaves, but <coughs> I'm going to use some of these. Um, what do they call them? Chrome ferns, which is what they are. And we're going to cover the bottom. So I'm going to put some glue on here. going to go all the way around because then that would be ostentatious. Let's just give it some length. Alright, so I'm going to do these and I'll be back. So, um, I did a few around here and now I'm putting these leaves. Um, and what I do, I'm just hot gluing them, but I also make like these U-hooks and all I do is take a, um, uh, paper clip and I cut them like so and make little U hooks. Now you can buy these at um, the floral department and Michael's or Joann's but they're really big um, so it's just an added uh, <coughs> an added security uh, to putting these pieces on here. So I put it on like that and then I take the piece and just squeeze that in, and there you go. So I'm going to continue putting these in, and then I am going to start adding some other florals, like these. Okay. So I get a little carried away, but just to put show you what I've been putting in. Um, this is the hydrangea from Dollar Tree. This is from Dollar Tree. These are from Dollar Tree. And I just keep going around and around. But I wanted something more on the wheel. So I got this from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to wrap it around the wheel. go in and then I'm going to stick it into the foam. Like so. This one I'm going to cut because it's a bit big. And I'm going to stick that into the foam. Yeah. Alright, so now I have a few more pieces. I love these picks. I just, they're stunning. They come in several colors. If you see them at the Dollar Tree, you really should get some because I just think they're beautiful. Um, and I wanted to add a little height. So you can see the whole thing. Yeah. I hope you like these fall DIYs. DIYs. There is a lot of floral in this one. It really is. Um, but I really, really like it. All right. Thank you. Please um, subscribe, like, share. You know, give it a thumbs up. They really help my channel to grow. YouTube pays attention to that, and when they see people actually watching and liking, they 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 share it with other people. So it's really, really great. Um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. I love your comments. Please leave comments below. And um, as we say, keep on creating. So there you are for the final reveal. I'm sorry I didn't have the middle DIY. I, it was my sister's anniversary on Friday, and so I gave it to her as a present. But um, I hope you really like these. Thank you so much. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and week and month and year. Thank you.